Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David. Mm-hmm. Are you mm-hmm. awake? Did you hear that? Yes, I'm awake and I heard it. Sounds as if something's getting murdered. Well, something will if it doesn't shut up. Blasted cats. Why do cats always choose the middle of the night? Because I'm trying to sleep. That one has a loud speaker on his whiskers. You know, it's funny we never hear cats in the country. Yeah, we'll just let them try. Well, I suppose if I were an alley cat in New York, I'd howl too. <sighs> David, mm. what if we threw them a fish? That'd shut them up. Fish is not what they're screaming for. Oh. You'd merely have a whole chorus of cats instead of a trio. Oh, I'm so sleepy. No wonder cats sleep all day. Oh, Will David, you stop doing will that? you be able to go back to sleep? No. Oh, poor darling. Please oh. try. Shut up, you beasts. Oh. Someone threw a flower pot. It didn't hit him, worse luck. David, how can you say that about a poor little cat? You know, New York certainly is awake when it's asleep. Oh, David, you'll smother with a pillow over your head. Take it off. Who cares? Good night. That cat sounds as if it's under the bed. I'll I'll close the window, darling. It's amazing how quiet it looks. Not a thing moving but noises. What time is it? It's... uh... One thirty. Oh, awful. Now go to sleep. Good night, darling. Yeah, same to you. Oh, I'm smothering. Take the pillow off your face. It's not on my face, but I can't sleep in a hot room. There's no air without a window. Well, David, you have your choice, air or cats. Air. I can't sleep with cats, but I can't live without air. It is warm tonight, even unseasonal. Mm. I suppose that's why the backyard fence is so crowded. Well, open the window. The heat on? No, it's just a warm night. Cat's gone, darling. Mm -hmm. They've gone on to wake somebody else. I'm wide awake. Pretend you're asleep. How does Mama do it? She closes her eyes and stops thinking. It'll be easier for you. All you have to do is close your eyes. Now listen, grumpy. Don't take those cats out on me. What I meant was, how does Mama sleep in the city anyway? Mm, Any way she can. Poor Mama. Well, sweet dreams. Oh, oh, there's a fire someplace. You awake, too? What do you think? Have you slept at all since? No, it's up to two. Uh, what time is it now, David? Uh, a quarter to three. Oh. It's a fine time of night to have a fire. Hey, where are you going? It sounds as if it's just down the street. Is it? No, it just sounds as if. Oh. David, remember how quiet the nights are in Eastbrook. Not a peep. Mm, I remember all right. I'm more tired now than I was when I went to bed. You'll go back to sleep in a minute. Uh, what for? To be awakened again, of course. Oh. Poor Mama. Say, David, mm-hmm. listen, maybe we ought to send her away or something on a vacation. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd forgotten how noisy the city is. Well, we'll talk about it in the morning. Don't forget. Hmm. Nice and quiet now. Uh, you had to open your big mouth. Uh, 
I had just fallen asleep. I was smarter. I didn't bother. The two cars just found each other. Probably the only two cars awake in New York at four o'clock. David, David, you'll smother yourself under the sheets. had to have an apartment near the river. Wait till I give her a piece of my mind. Poor Mama. I don't know how she survives. Uh, it's five o'clock. Almost time to get up. Well, it'll be quiet now. Yeah, what makes you think so? Because it's almost time to get up. Yeah. Besides, the night was so noisy, so daytime's bomb to be quiet. Uh, it's I, opposite. I no. see. Roll over. Go on. I'm comfortable. David? Hmm. You, you have a big day ahead? Mm-hmm, a humdinger. Hmm, wouldn't you know it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, good night, darling. Mm-hmm. Good morning, darling. Oh, no, no, it can't be. It is. It's like waking up in a dentist's chair. Oh, they can't be riveting already. It's the middle of the night. It is half past seven. Oh, maybe I'm dead. Too early to rivet. Much. I'll write a letter. That's what I'll do. To whom? To the city, to the government. Oh, good. Shouldn't be allowed. There ought to be a law against it. I couldn't agree with you more. Forbidden to rivet before noon. But I can't hear what you're saying. But it doesn't matter. Speak louder. I haven't the strength. I think you ought to take a room in a hotel, darling. Why am I shouting for? Riveting stopped. Oh, what bliss. Mm, made my teeth hurt just to hear it. I feel soggy limp. Yeah? What soggy limp? Us. <laughs> you think we ought to go back to sleep? Sleep? <laughs> What's that? Riveting stopped. Only to catch its breath. Mm, well, maybe that's all. Maybe it was just a little cavity. No, it's the Grand Canyon. What? Nothing. What do they rivet for, anyway? <laughs> to wake people up. Oh, to be in Eastbrook now that riveting is here. Oh, we might as well get up. I'll close the window, darling. Maybe that'll make it quiet. Yeah. Not much better, is it? Oh, I don't need to shout now. I'm up. I mean, I'm up. Well, you you don't look so bad. Thanks. Just a little so-so around the ears. Well, the ears are tired. They were up all night. How do I look? No, 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 no. Don't tell me. David, I didn't remember New York being so noisy at night. Mm-hmm. You probably slept through it. How could I possibly? You were younger. Well, I must have been very younger. Well, how about breakfast? Fine. I've worked up quite an appetite. David, I'm so sorry about last night. Mm, it's not your fault. It didn't seem possible it was so noisy. Oh, well, maybe you can manage a nap after lunch. Mm, oh, sure. Shh. Uh, shh. Why? Maybe Mom is just falling asleep. With that riveting going on? Oh, that's true. Shh. Anyway, on general principles. Being quiet with all that riveting going on is like throwing good money after bad. We'll be in the kitchen in a moment, then we can talk out loud. David. What? When you lived in New York, was it noisy like this? Last night must be sort of an exception. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, I'll make the coffee strong. Don't do that. Maybe we should take Mama back to the country with us. Or if she doesn't want to come with us, we can send her off someplace else. Mama won't like being treated like a package being sent off someplace else. Well, like it or not, this can't go on, poor thing. You know, I didn't believe it when I read all that stuff about the city getting so congested. All the building going on and everything. I thought certainly it was all exaggerated. And now I know it's true. You do, huh? Conditions prove it, too, David. Yeah, well, tell me about it. Well, now, take fires. What do fires come from? Crowded living conditions. Yes? Mm. Oh, you agree? Good. And riveting, what's that come from? Building new buildings, yes. Well, there's no doubt about that. Well, there you have it. Have what? As simple as the nose on your face. What is? Why, it's so noisy, and I didn't remember it before. Oh, I'm glad you told me. Sorry. I feel a lot better about the whole thing. Good. Now I'll make breakfast. Oh, darling, you do look tired. Stop telling me, and I don't want any of that noisy breakfast food either. It's not your fault. 
Shouting won't make it look better. I didn't mean to shout. I'll look better after I shave. Listen, why don't you take a nice cold shower while I make the coffee? No, oh, I'll take a nice cold shower after just a few more days and we'll be back in Eastbrook. Just thinking about it makes me drool. We'll make the coffee. Well, well, everybody up bright and early. Mama. Good morning, Mother. Oh, it's nice to see all this activity. And you must be feeling strong today, Claudia. Why, well, you're even brewing the coffee. Strong. It's going to be a nice day. I can feel it. Let's open the windows. Stuffy in this kitchen, isn't it? She's acting awfully spry, isn't she, David? Yeah, awfully. There. Yeah. That's better. Oh, no. What's the matter, David? Why the face? And come to think of it, why the faces? You both look as if you've been hung on a clothesline all night. Would you speak up, Mother? I can't hear you. Is your hearing affected, too? All I can hear is the riveting. What riveting? What riveting? You mean that you don't oh, hear that? that building outside. It's not very noisy today. Hardly at all. I'll push over, Claudia. I'll make breakfast. <clears throat> Shall I ask her, David? Yeah, go on, darling. I am struck dumb. Um, what, Mama? Mama how, how, how did you sleep? Fine. Why? You slept fine. Beautifully. It was mm. warmish and very nice. Mm. You, you didn't hear anything? Of course not. I was asleep. <laughs> how could I hear anything when I was asleep? Well, we were too, but it woke us up all night. What is it? The noises. Cats, fires, taxis. Foghorns and then for whipped cream, the riveting. That riveting wouldn't wake a mouse. Well, it woke us two mouses. And then you are mouses. Or should I say mice? Now stop pretending, Mama. Listen, do you ever get a decent night's sleep anymore? Of course I do. Except when I'm in the country with you. Except, uh, except what? Repeat that, please. Except when I'm in the country with you? All those infernal frogs and crickets and birds and roosters and cows. It takes me two or three days to get enough used to the noise in your farm so that I can sleep. Oh, David. That's true. I've never heard as noisy a place as your farm. It's always a pleasure to be back in New York and get a decent night's sleep again. Believe me. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When you pause during the day's occupation to hear a radio program, you get needed relaxation as well as entertainment. And when you open an ice-cold bottle of Coca-Cola at the same time, your relaxation is even more complete. Or when there's sparkling, delicious Coke to drink, you listen refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes... And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. <laughs>